Okay, in this lecture, we're going to start talking about network parameters. And network parameters are something that we traditionally used uh, to describe what might have been called a black box. Um, so there were approaches to black box design. In other words, uh, we don't necessarily need to know what's inside of a black box. We can measure its input, output impedance, and some type of uh, uh, transitive property between port 1 and port 2, and port 2 and port 1, and we can understand what the system is doing. Traditional approaches such as impedance parameters or Z parameters rely on being able to use an ideal open or short circuit, uh, and this can't be done at high frequency. Our solution is going to be to use a fixed impedance termination. Before we do that, let's examine the Z parameters to see what's wrong with our high frequency uh, approach uh, in using network parameters uh, such as the Z parameters. So if I have a black box that I have the Z parameters for the black box, Z11, Z12, Z22, and Z22, Z21, uh, I can uh, figure out what the uh, voltages are at the ports uh, by multiplying the impedance matrix by uh, a, a port stimulation current matrix. So for instance, uh, if I wanted to find uh, what was inside of this black box, so if I wanted to find Z11, I could solve uh, for V1 when I put a current into uh, I1 and set the port two current to zero. Okay, well, how do I do that? So I could add a test source. It can be a voltage or a current source. Here, I'll make it a voltage source and I can measure the current flowing into port one when I leave port two open. So I two equals to zero means port two is open. The challenge with this is that we can't make a perfect open circuit at port two. And the reason for that is there's always some parasitic capacitance that we have to be concerned with that shorts the port to particularly a high frequency. Now in analysis, we can do this, but when we're actually making a measurement, we can't do it. We can find the rest of the Z parameters by following similar rules for opening uh, the ports and driving the ports with different currents or voltages. Z21 is the trans impedance of the structure. It's V2 over I1 when I2 is equal to zero. Z12 is the reverse trans impedance of the structure, V1 over I2 when I1 is equal to zero. And Z22 is the output impedance of the structure, V2 over I2 when I1 is equal to zero. You'll note that the dimensions of all of these equations should be in terms of impedance. In other words, they should be voltage over current. We can describe a network in terms of its Y parameters as well. These are the admittance parameters. And in this case, we, if we had a, an admittance matrix, we could multiply it by a voltage stimulation matrix at port one or port two and find the output current matrix. For instance, if we were looking for Y11, the input admittance, it would be equal to I1 over V1 when V2 is equal to zero. Uh, that would mean in principle that we would want to short port V2 and measure the voltage at port one if we were to put a current into port one. The challenge is that high frequency, we can't make a perfect short due to a parasitic inductance that exists in wiring. In other words, we might have some inductance in this wiring that at high frequency becomes a high impedance. So instead of trying to use these well-known parameters Z and Y, which relate to physical parameters that we're used to, we're going to look at uh, S parameters. And S parameters relate uh, the reflection coefficient uh, of a structure uh, to a network 